Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math Video 35. And if you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 3, Section 3.5, click on the link below the video. In this video, or in this chapter and section, we're talking about rate of change, increase, decrease problems, and we have a bunch of stock values. And we're going to do, we need to go figure out what the current price is for each one of these stocks. So for example, on May 1st, 2007, we bought Amazon for 38 bucks. We need the current price, and they need to figure out the rate of change, either up or down. Now here's the cool thing. There is a built-in feature. Here's the ribbon tabs. If you click on Data, over here in Get External Data, there's a button that you can click. And you the dialog box will open up, and it'll say, what stocks do you have? And you'll highlight these stocks, and it will go to through in the internet through the Microsoft site and get the current stock market values for these uh, stocks here. All right. Now the trick is we're going to uh, go to existing connections and just click it. We're going to dump what's called a web query uh, down here that will list all of the stocks uh, from up here, but all the current values. And the cool thing about this is, is we can refresh it any time, and it will go back out to the stock market and get the current value. So our table will be linked to the internet, to the stock market in essence. Now, I'm shooting this on a Sunday, so the stock market is not open. But still, it'll get the prices from last Friday. I'm going to click on existing, existing connections. There it is, uh, stock quotes right there. If for some reason your computer is not set up and not seeing this, you may have to browse and find it because it's something that's built in that comes with Excel, but maybe your particular uh, version is not pointing to the right uh, folder. You may have to ask your network administrator. But once you have this, you just double click it. It says, where do you want it? I'm going to dump it right there. I'm going to click um, OK. It's going to say, hey, where are the stocks? you got to have this actual stock market uh, symbols. And then uh, use this value refresh for future refreshes. That means it's going to look always here uh, when it goes to update. That means if you change any of these, it will update and, and update the web query. I'm going to click OK. It uh, took a moment, and there it is. So there are the last prices. Now. If I was shooting this while the stock market was open, I would right click and come down, ooh, right all the way down at the bottom, right click, refresh. Also, if you have your cursor inside of the web query and click refresh, that'll work up on the data. Right click, refresh, and it will update. But again, I'm shooting this on a Sunday. No problem. Now we need our current prices equals that. That's a relative cell reference. Notice because these are listed in a certain order, these um, values for the stocks are listed in the exact same order. So we can copy this down. 234.78. Drag it down. Double click that, or F2. And you can see that Yahoo is looking at the right Yahoo. Now let's figure out our rate of change. We have two possible formulas that we can use. The one most commonly used in finance is end divided by begin minus 1. So I'm going to say equals end divided by begin. Remember, this is an increase or decrease problem. So you always take the end, compare it with division to the beginning, and then subtract 1. 504.32%. Wow. Now, that was a good buy. But unfortunately, this was 2007. This was right before the huge housing market crash, which crashed the economies all around the world and stock values. So most of these are horrifically negative. Boy, I guess I didn't pick the stocks very well. Now, um, let's go ahead and check this over here. We could do, um, you know, in this class, we always do it multiple ways. So again, if we're in charge of the spreadsheet, we want to make sure we got the right answer. Well, if you have the amount of the change, which is the difference between these two, and you compare it to the begin, that will also give you a uh, rate of change. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to say this minus this divided by begin. 5.04. And is that the same? That's not this. Oh, this has got formatted. This was already formatted. This is not. So I could simply come up and go, if I wanted to do percentage, I could say, and there we have it. Um, one last thing. Okay, So for this class, um, well, this is just an example of 
a really good business example of when you use percentage change up or down. Um, I'm going to do a little trick here. I want to highlight the row when it's red, and this is not required for this class. Now we're going to use conditional formatting. You highlight the whole range, and the active cell up in the corner here, you, we can be sure that the active cell is right there. And then you simply go up to Home, Conditional Formatting, New Rule. Now what is conditional formatting? It means it will format it based on some condition. And our condition is going to be, is anything for, for any particular row, is the percentage change negative, which means less than 0. So I'm going to come down here to New Rule. I'm going to uh, use a formula. I'm going to click right here. And the active cell is right there, so I have to select this percentage change. And there's two dollar signs, one for the column and one for the row. For this to work, you have to hit the F4 key once and twice. And I have the dollar sign only in front of the column reference and not the row reference. Then you say less than. 0. Now less than 0 means if it's 0, exactly 0, which means no change, it won't show up red. All right. So I have my little formula there. I click Format, and then I add whatever. I'm going to add Red Fill, and then Font White. So the whole trick was there is highlight. Active cell is the one up in the upper left-hand corner. Put that formula, click OK. And boom. Now, the amazing thing about this is if you are have this open during the stock market, you will refresh it and it will automatically update. Let's just pretend. I'm going to say Krispy Kreme actually was, I'm going to type it in right here just so you can see how that's conditional, right? I'm going to type uh, $15. Now, because 15 is bigger than that, that means the ending value is bigger. That means this will show up as positive and it should no longer be red when I hit Control Enter. 15. And there we go. All right, um, percentage change up or down for stock values. All right, see you next video.